ticketh closer than our brother. And that's why each and every one of us need to have Jesus as our first and foremost friend. Because we can talk to him at any time, and he's there. Now, when Brother Royks is here, he sings a song. He says, when you've tried everything and everything fails, <laughs> try Jesus. Wow. Amen. Why? Because he's your dearest friend, and he'll stick with you right clear to the end. When you've tried everything and everything fails, try Jesus. Amen. He's a wonderful friend, isn't he? We sang a song this morning from the hymn book, uh, friendship with Jesus. Jesus is a wonderful friend. He really is. And then there's another hymn that we could sing. Uh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Amen. He's a wonderful friend. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 11. A true friend will always encourage you to serve the Lord. Here's what it says here. Wherefore comfort yourselves together and Edify one another, even as also you do. What's that last phrase mean? I know you do it, but continue on. Friends out there, to edify, lift up one another. The scripture setting this morning from uh, Acts, uh, when we started out in the third chapter and ended up in the 13th chapter, Saul was a Pharisee. He wanted to please God, and he was very zealous to do so, but he just went about it all wrong. And he did some terrible things to those who were believers. Matter of fact, hailing them in the prison, wanting to kill them. Saul believed with all of his heart at the time he was doing the right thing by harming believers. And I could refer to John chapter 16 and 2 to prove that. We won't bring that up on the screen. But there was a day when Saul met Jesus. Glory. Who was Jesus to Saul? His best friend. He just didn't know him yet. Jesus appeared to Saul when he was heading to Damascus to arrest more believers. and A great light came down from heaven and blinded him. And there was a voice that spoke. And, and Saul cried out and said, who art thou, Lord? And he got acquainted with Jesus that day. He believed the truth and he found out that Jesus was the Son of God, the Messiah, his Lord, his Savior, and one for whom he needed to work. Saul repented of his sins. He changed in his heart and in his mind and he was sorry for all the things that he'd done, and especially to the Christians, and he begins to follow Jesus, and he never turned back. Wow. Now, he did get discouraged, but he didn't give up on God, all right? Jesus gave Saul a brand new identity, and he changed his name, and he filled him with the Holy Ghost. Now, can you imagine with me for a few minutes what it would be like to convince the church of the believers that you were one of them? <laughs> no, some people think the worst. Now, a true friend doesn't think the worst. Okay, but see, Paul was out there, Saul, before his name was changed Paul, killing Christians, him in the prison. So the church began to think now he's playing Christian. When he finds out who we are, we'll be dead too. <laughs> you know, this is just another ploy. You know? So it was hard for the church to trust this man by the name of Paul now. I mean, if we should trust him, why didn't he retain his original name? <laughs> this is just some ploys. Well, it was hard for them to accept according to Acts chapter 9 and 26, and we won't turn there either. But you know what happened? There was a man who believed in Paul. And he was part of the church. That man's name was Barnabas. And Barnabas put his own life on the line to bring Paul to the church when they were scared to death of him. And he told the church, you can believe this guy. He's got a true conversion experience. The Lord has 
forgiven him of sins and he's been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. You don't need to fear this guy. You're going to be safe in his presence. He's been called to preach. And you know what? Because of Barnabas, the church felt at ease with Paul. Can I tell you that Barnabas was a true friend <laughs> to Paul? He really was. Barnabas introduced Saul to the church. Barnabas, uh, when you think of a person, if you were to describe them, you think of their most important parts. And, and one of Barnabas' greatest features uh, was the meaning of his name. And it means son of consolation or encourager. He lived up to his name. And he encouraged not only Paul, uh, who formerly was Saul, but he encouraged the church folk to put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and to serve him with all of your heart, mind, and soul, and strength. Barnabas, this good man, the, the scripture says he was full of faith and he was full of the Holy Ghost, and he certainly did believe in good works. And at that time it mentions that the believers who were in the church had all things common and they shared. Even Barnabas himself sold all of his possessions, put it into that common pot. He didn't spend it on himself. Now we know there was an Ananias and fire after that that made a false show, but Barnabas wasn't a false show. He was genuine right to the core. He gave to others and didn't uh, spend all on himself. So we find out from the first mentions of this man by the name of Barnabas, that he was a very generous Christian. That's a good testimony, isn't it? He was generous. He liked to promote Jesus. He liked to promote others and did so with Paul before he would promote himself. He believed in people. He was an encourager, a helper, encouraging people like the apostle or like Paul who no one else believed in and because of Barnabas stepping in put his own neck on the line he was like a mediator to bring about peace to a situation now I'm wondering here this morning if anybody could think of a time in their life when they may have been down and discouraged but it was a brother or sister that came to them with encouraging words, and that's why you're in the church today. Now, the name might not have been Barnabas, but you know who it was. And you'll never forget that person. Everybody needs a true friend. Could have been a Sunday school teacher, maybe a parent, might even have been your pastor. But you know what? Encouragement makes all the difference in the world to someone that's about to give up. Did you catch that? I said, encouragement makes all the difference in the world to someone that's just about to give up. Amen. Praise God. Don't give up. Let this pastor this morning be your friend to encourage you. You can make it, my friend. You can make it. Keep on. As believers, the most important thing that we can do for another believer and be their friend is to encourage them to follow Jesus and never give up, even in discouraging times. And the, the Bible encourages us to stick together and encourage one another, another, even commands us to do so. In Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 3, look what it says here. But exhort one another. Exhort, encourage, strengthen. Exhort one another daily. And well, it's called today, lest any you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. We need to be encouragers and exhort one another on a daily basis to continue to serve the Lord. So not only was Barnabas a good man full of the Holy Ghost and uh, helped the apostle Paul, or excuse me, Paul, but then he also spoke up for Paul, and it made a huge difference in Paul's life. You'll find that in Acts chapter 9, verses 20 through 6, 26 through 31, and we're not going to read that today. <coughs> but Paul had met, 
<coughs> Excuse me. Paul had met Jesus on the way to Damascus. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. He began to preach boldly the word of God and that Jesus was the Son of God. And then some discouragement sent in and Barnabas went after him. Amen. Thank God for some Barnabases. And what a big change that made in Paul's life. Uh, it not only made a change in Paul's life, there was a succession here. Because he was encouraged, he was able to encourage others. We find out that Jewish believers and religious leaders in Damascus, they liked Paul's preaching. And can I say this in a right way? They even liked his better than Barnabas's. But again, because Barnabas was a true friend, he didn't get jealous. <laughs> he would rather promote Paul than himself. And they liked Paul's preaching, but not everybody liked Paul's preaching. There were some that turned against him and made a plan and a plot to kill him. So Paul left and he went to Jerusalem. The believers in Jerusalem were in a different situation. They had heard about Paul and his reputation. They're afraid of him. So here's Paul almost pulling out his hair. I gave my heart to Jesus. I repented of my sins. I've done all this, and it seemed like my past has followed me. Nobody loves me. Nobody hates me. I guess I'll eat some worms. <laughs> he was discouraged, but Barnabas went after him and encouraged him and introduces him to the church. Now, uh, it wasn't all that hard for Barnabas to appeal to the church and tell them that they could believe in this guy, and they did. So here's another point about a true friend. A true friend believes in you. And I'll tell you what, it's nice to have somebody that believes in you. It makes a difference. It makes a change. Uh, uh, someone that will go to bat for you, put it that way. And it can make all the difference. Paul then began to speak more boldly to the church. And the church grew in number. And he got back to preaching. And now it's time to go on a missionary journey. We find out that in Acts 13, Paul and Barnabas were sent by the church. The Holy Ghost had laid it upon them in a prayer meeting to send these two men on a missionary journey. And away they went. And they began to visit churches together. And again, Barnabas was the guy up front for the first missionary trip. But then there was time for a second or missionary trip, and we find out the tide had changed. And now Paul is more the prominent one than Barnabas. And Barnabas didn't, didn't get jealous. Barnabas didn't get mad. He didn't try to keep Paul under his thumb. He thought, here's a man that can far surpass anything I've ever done. I'm going to promote that guy. Well, that's a true friend, isn't it? So he's promoted, and away he goes, and Paul was a big part of God's plan, especially when it comes to the message being preached to the Gentiles. Wow. I'm thankful for, the, for, for Paul. Matter of fact, he re wrote uh, over two-thirds of the New Testament, but I can trace it back further than that. Oh, if it wasn't for Barnabas. <laughs> Where would Paul have been? So I'm thanking God for a true friend that believed in Paul and put him out front and pushed him. And because of it, the message has come to you and I. Amen. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Now on their first missionary journey, the Lord was working with them signs and wonders. They went to the island of Cyprus took John Mark along with them. They traveled across that island and preaching Jesus. The governor of the island even heard of the message, and he wanted to hear Paul and Barnabas. <laughs> but the governor had a helper that was an evil man, and he tried to keep the governor from hearing the message that Paul had to preach. But the Lord working with them with signs and wonders and miracles, and the Lord will do that. Right, signs, wonders, and miracles. Barnabas and Paul, and praying for people, introducing them to Jesus. They were teaching Jews and non-Jews. They told about 
Jesus as their Savior. They told about Jesus as their healer. They were traveling along and doing just wonderfully, speaking powerfully and speaking boldly about the Lord and the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following, Acts 14. And then uh, the turn. We find out Paul becomes more prominent than Barnabas, and that wasn't a problem with Barnabas at all. He was a true friend, and you know something? True friends cannot be separated. True friends cannot be separated. <laughs> They're a friend for life. Now, I've got friends in my life, and miles stand between us, but it doesn't affect our friendship. Matter of fact, with a true friend, you can be separated from my, you can be separated for days even and not even talk to one another. But when you get together, it's like you were just talking yesterday. Right? You pick up from where you left off. That's a true friend. And you're still included in their life. I've got the privilege next weekend. I'm looking forward to this. I'm going to be in St. John next weekend with my friend. My friend is Brent Carter. Now, I pastored him in Cushabuac. He was 10 years old when I got there. But Brent and I formed an awesome relationship. Okay? And he became a right-hand man to me. And uh, we worked in the woods together. Matter of fact, we've had some good times, some humorous times. He fell a tree on me one time. <laughs> he wasn't mad at me. It was an accident. <laughs> Okay, when that tree come down, hit me on the head, he hollered, but I was, my saw was right, right, I didn't hear it. And the impact of that sent me to the ground. It broke the harness in my hard hat, sent my glasses off and even the glass out of the glasses. He come over and, oh, Brother Trail, Brother Trail, Brother Trail, he, are you are? I couldn't even speak. <laughs> I was so shocked he did that to me. No, that's why I couldn't speak. <laughs> I couldn't speak because I was in shock because of the impact. All right? We worked together. We played together. I remember playing ball hockey and softball, and we'd get the, the, the uh, members of the community come and play ball with us, and it was our game, so we set the rules. And one of the rules was that if you're going to play with us, you're going to be a Christian like we are, and you're going to talk like Christians as we do. <laughs> All right, and we had a wonderful life. We worked together, we played together, talked and all that. And uh, then I left there and went for another pass. Brent, Brent and I has always been friends. It was amusing here about two years ago. <laughs> well, let's just do a, a, a diversion here. Brent left Cushabaquack, and he also went to Bathurst and worked under Brother P Potter for a while, assisted him. And then... Uh, uh, he went to the church in Chatham. It was his first place. Did wonderful work. And now in St. John, he's one of the presbyters in our district now. He gets lots of chances to preach. I don't get that many. I'm not a presbyter, right? What's happening? There was potential in that young man, and he can work rings around me in the woods. He can work rings around me in the ministry. And so I like to promote him. He said, why? Because the work of the Lord's getting done. Two years ago, <laughs> this was funny, I missed a district event. And I, I didn't think anything of it, but at the time there was a little mustering in the district and some people were on edge. And so I get a call from Brent. How are you today, Brother Trail? He says, I said, I'm fine. He said, uh, I missed you. I said, I said, nice to be missed. <laughs> Why did I answer that way? He's calling because he wanted to know where I was. I said, nice to be missed. <laughs> no, I was going to tell him, I had nothing to hide. We're friends. Right? Don't know nothing wrong with me, but it, it was nice to get the call, nice to be missed. Still friends, <laughs> nothing wrong with me. I, I, my heart's all right. I, I'm still believing. I'm still preaching the gospel. Man, I appreciate your call. Last week, I missed another district event. I had a funeral. <laughs> this time, I didn't wait for him to call me. I called him. 
I said, Brent, <laughs> I said, I can't make it to conference. I got a funeral. Oh, he says, I know everything's all right. <laughs> yeah. What happens is, that's not just talk. There was communication. It's so nice to have a friend and even a best friend, but there is a friend that's sick of closer than a best friend. There's times in Brent's ministry he's called me, and there's times I've called him. But you see, there was still 60, 70 miles between us. He was busy, and I was busy, and we couldn't get together. Thank the Lord for a phone. Okay? But you know what? Jesus was right there. Jesus was there. He knows my heart. Whether I talk to Brent, whether I talk to one of my other friends, or whether they say anything to me, Jesus will be there anytime, all the time, every time. He's the friend that sticketh closer than a brother. To Paul, Barnabas was a great man, but when he met Jesus, Barnabas took second place. Yeah, he said, why? Jesus became his Lord, his master, his true friend. Now, that didn't eliminate Barnabas. Barnabas was still there, and he was still a great guy. In closing this morning, we're here among one another, and I'd like to ask us, do you know of somebody today that you would call a friend? And more than just a friend, a close friend but maybe they need some encouragement. It shouldn't be one-sided. Did we read to you in the scripture from 1 Thessalonians? We were commanded by the scripture to exhort one another daily. He said, and I know you're going to do that and continue to do it even as you have done that. Maybe a brother or a sister who is your friend needs some encouragement today. Why don't you do that? Now, it could be here in the service. It might be after the service is done and you go home and you call a friend and it might even start out the same way Brent started with me. I missed you at church today. No, you're not just trying to find out where they've been. You truly miss them. And they need to be in the house of God. In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 25, there was another exhortation that we're supposed to give to one another as friends. We're to exhort one another to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And so much more so as we see the day approaching. We need the house of God. We need one another. And we need Jesus. Amen? Let's stand this morning.